everyone, Blue Goblin here with my comic book review for the second week in February 2010. Thank you for watching, everybody, and before I get started, I want to thank everybody who subscribed. I, had just, I have just reached 200 subscribers. I want to thank everybody from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for subscribing to my channel. Uh, and I welcome viewers who haven't subscribed yet. Go ahead and subscribe. you got nothing to lose. I'm going to start with a book from last week that I didn't get due to a shipping error. We're going to start with Spider-Man Noir, Eyes Without a Face, number three. David Hine nails another solid hit with Marvel with uh, this intricate into the Noir series. Very, very good stuff here. You see more character development in Felicia Hardy. You now see that she actually legitimately cares for Peter. Uh, the Sandman is just awesome in this book. Uh... All in all, it's just a great, great issue. The story is disturbing, but at the same time, it's still well worth reading. Very good stuff here. The deliberate racism. you got to think back in the 1930s. you got to think from a 1930s standpoint. This is, this is how a noir series should be written. This is very, very good stuff here. Well worth your $3.99. Next up, The Amazing Spider-Man number 620. Uh, Dan Slott. <laughs> Dan, you're awesome. This is good stuff. Marcus Martin has some good artwork as well. Very, very good stuff from Mar from Marvel here. Uh, out of all the stories I've read so far and from the Gauntlet, this is probably the best I've read. I mean, I will never look at Mysterio as a joke of a villain again. This is just fantastic. Uh, you know, this is how an Amazing Spider-Man book should be written, and you you need to enjoy this when you read it. You know, it's just very, very good stuff. I enjoyed every part of it. You know, Mysterio has just been awesome ever since Old Man Logan. And what more can I say? It's just fantastic. It gets really personal between Spider-Man and Mysterio in here. Mr. Negative plays a good role in this book as well. Far beyond smoke and mirrors, as the title suggests. Very good stuff. Dan, keep writing Spider-Man like that. Ultimate Spider-Man number seven. You know what? Screw it. Boring! Alright, let's keep moving. Jackpot number two. I... Yeah, I'll admit it. I'm a fan of Jackpot. I'm a fan of the character. But then again, you know, the series... The series really still isn't doing anything for me. I mean, issue one, I said, was simply just there. I feel the same way about issue two. It's just there. Although I have to admit, it's, it, this this one is better than issue one was. Uh, this has a, a pretty a pretty interesting twist at the end with Boomerang and everything. All in all, it's still, you know, if, if you're not a, a devoted fan of Spider-Man like I am, then odds are you're probably going to skip out on this miniseries. I don't think it's going to be well remembered. I don't, and I certainly don't think it's worth three ninety nine to a casual Spider-Man collector. If you're simply a casual fan of Spider-Man, then go ahead and skip it. You ain't missing much. Booster Gold number twenty nine. Don't skip this book. Wow, Dan Jurgens is a genius when it comes to writing stories for Booster Gold. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's stories like this where Booster Gold can have the right to say, sometimes I hate this job. You know, <laughs> it's just awesome. I, you know, so many dilemmas, you know, you, you really want to feel bad for any time traveler who wants to feel like they're doing the right thing by stopping something. But then again, you have to let it happen to let history, you know, run properly along the timeline. It's just... You gotta. Do, there are some things you just, you just have to do, even though you might not be a fan of it. And the 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 twist at the the conclusion at the end of this issue, the the cliffhanger, it just makes me want Booster Gold number thirty even more. Woo! Just do yourselves a favor. If you're a DC fan, then pick this book up. This is really good stuff. Let's keep rolling. Batgirl number seven. I, this was a fun read. This was fun. I, you know, I kind of felt nostalgic when I read this book. You know, you get, you know, Robin 
and Batgirl trying to one-up each other in front of Batman. Doesn't that sound a little familiar? Here we got Robin, Damian Wayne, and Batgirl Stephanie Brown trying to one-up each other in front of Batman, Dick Grayson. You know, I seem to remember over time when I was younger, it was Robin, Dick Grayson, Batgirl, Barbara Gordon trying to one-up each other in front of Bruce Wayne. You know, it, it's kind of got like the next generation twist of an old formula that worked in the past. You know, that's kind of how this book felt for me. And you know what? To me, simply for nostalgic reasons, it works. It works for me. Not a bad book, but I'm really anticipating issue number eight. That's when Stephanie comes face to face with Tim Drake. Really looking forward to how they pull that story out. <sighs> Adventure Comics, number seven, featuring Black Lantern Superboy. Just when you thought it was safe to talk to a Black Lantern. <laughs> good stuff. Really good stuff from here. Um, I love, the, I love the, the, the drama in this book. The drama entertained me greatly. I loved it. I mean, and come on, who doesn't love crypto, especially after this book, you know? Hey, DC, give crypto his own series. It'll be better than any Deadpool shit that's out right now. No, I'm just kidding. Don't, don't, don't give crypto his own series, please. Please don't do that. But uh, all joking aside, this was good stuff. Very, very good stuff. Um, you know, I almost wanted to hear, like, uh, a speech from... I almost wanted to hear a speech about paradoxes from Doc Brown when I see the conclusion of this story, but, you know... This was all right. This was a very, very entertaining issue to read. I had fun reading it. I enjoyed reading it, and I think you would too, especially if you're getting into the Blackest Night. Very, very well put together. I think it's well worth your three ninety nine. Go ahead and give it a look. I think you'll like it. Last on the list, Secret Six number eighteen. Oh wow, brilliance! Just pure brilliance from Gail Simone. Oh man, I'm, I'm I'm once again going to apologize for um, for not reviewing this series sooner. I have to thank Blackest Night for getting me hooked on Secret Six. The 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 development of every character in this story in this team is just phenomenal, just really well done. And in this issue, Death Deadshot really shines. And I love what he does in this book. <laughs> I'm not spoiling it though. But I like what Deadshot does. Very good. I've been waiting on him to shoot somebody like that for a long time. Especially who he shoots. Whew! Good stuff. And Craig, my friend, you were right. Bendis' Dark Avengers ain't got shit on Gail Simone's Secret Six. Awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. Well, that's all I got for this week. Uh, I apologize that the video quality is a little off this week because my webcam's not working properly right now. Uh, thanks, everybody, again for subscribing. I finally hit the big 200. Let's see if we can get to 300. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe. You'll be doing yourselves a favor. At least I hope you are. Uh, thanks again for watching, everybody, and until next time, I'll see you later.